Hello and welcome to my review of the Sisters of Battle Canon S. Been really excited for this model, hugely anticipated. I've wanted one ever since it was announced and it, Games Workshop showed all of the weapon options and possibilities with this kit and it's finally here so uh, I'll go through the full model itself. I want to start off by talking about the price. It's £22.50 and you compare it to other HQ's choices in other armies, I think that's relatively priced. For what you get in this box, you get two sprues that are jam-packed with options, uh, more that you can shake a stick at. The only um, slight issue I have is if you do get a second Canon S, which I would suggest you do, is that with that scenic base, they're going to look a little bit similar because they're going to be in the same pose, standing on that um, bit of scenery. It would have been nice if you had two scenery options in the kit, maybe. Instead of this, you had like a pipe. You know, you don't have to use that. You can, you know, kit bash a pipe or find uh, something from Games Workshop's own uh, basing scenery kits that they do. Um, and you could have a uh, step on that. Um, her right foot just has a, a little uh, plug and so you could snip that off and then you're good to go put find something of similar um, height to get that um, same level and then that's going to uh, change the look of, of the model um, significantly. So first off by saying that you get this big old box, it's quite a thick box, it's the same size box as a Hospitaler um, but you get way way more parts. Uh, here's a taste, but a taste of all the options inside this box. You've got power swords, chain sword, blessed swords or blessed blades, uh, brazier of holy fires, plasma pistols, inferno pistols, bolt pistols, uh, condemner bolt gun, which isn't on there, but it is on the front. Okay, so the box is great. The instruction guide is fantastic. Uh, gives you a load of options there. They, they specifically give you those examples because those are the ones that uh, relate to the rules. Um, so for this one with the Brazier of Holy Fire, you can um, have the chainsaw there as well. Uh, this one here that's already got the chainsaw has got the Inferno Pistol. And then this one here has got the uh, chainsaw and the Condemma Bolt Gun and the Rod of Office. It's, it's that way around. You can't take... Um, you know, chainsword and a blessed blade, for instance. You you you're swapping the chainsword out with a different melee weapon, unless it's a null rod or brazier. I hope that makes sense. The 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 we'll talk about the rules in a, in a bit, but it can be quite confusing to get your head around. Anyway, it does show you the different uh, options here. Um, look, so you've got the null rod. Sorry, I meant the null rod instead of um, rod of office or whatever. Uh, you've got the null rod and the brazier of holy fire with the chainsword. Um, in its sleeve and then this is the second option where you've got the either the chain sword the uh, power sword or the blessed blade or blessed sword and then it gives you the options here for the range weapons with that null rod or with the the other uh, melee weapon and then it gives you the the full data sheet which is exactly the same as in the codex and it goes through all of the abilities uh, and the weapon profiles um, even for the pistol list as well which is nice uh, you know, it's got a separate pistol list um, as well as you know, other weapons. So quite comprehensive, except for, you know, um, not knowing what Acts of Faith, Sacred Rights and Shield of Faith are. But, you know, if you've got the codex, you, you will know those. Um, so quite an exhaustive guide there and an exhaustive paint guide. So I can't recommend this kit more than enough for £22.50. I think it's uh, very fair um, for what you're getting. And, uh, of course, you know my channel now if I don't think something's fair I will yeah I'll shout it out one time so let's have a look at the model herself and uh, let's see the option that I've gone for I've gone for the blessed sword or blessed blade I like the inlaid writing I like the length of it the how thin it is and the guard it just looks way better than the, the old tired um, power sword that it comes with I'll, I'll show you the spare parts in a moment of which there are many um, I've gone for the helmeted option that's fine. I mean, I, I don't mind that. That goes well with all my other sisters, which have mainly got helmets on where possible. I'm not a huge fan of any of the, the haircuts, really. So uh, for me, the, with the helmet, that works. I've gone for the plasma pistol because the Inferno pistol isn't at the same angle. And you can't really cut it a bit to, to change that angle. It's, it's at a really odd angle. It's almost like she's pointing at the ground rather than just having it away from her. Um, but the sword and the head are in lovely 
positions. It's just that Inferno pistol isn't the same angle as a plasma pistol. That's why I've gone for the plasma. But if the Inferno was in a, a better position, I would have gone for that. Um, the scenic base is lovely. I say scenic base, it's just got this big uh, pillar, st stone pillar, which is going to be a pain to paint all in there, obviously, now. Uh, not any many issues with the mold lines or the joins of the model. Um, you've got this nice little halo thing going on. And then, yeah, you've got a choice of two of these front armors. I've gone for this one because I like the tassets, the armor tassets either side. Um, but yeah, fair amount of detail, good HQ choice. You could put her on a bigger base, I guess, if you if you wanted to. But I've gone for the, the typical uh, 32 mil base because the, the other Canon S is, is on one already and I didn't want them, I mean, not favoritism, but I didn't want them to, uh, you know, look too different. Uh, in terms of base sizes, but uh, looking height wise, they're kind of exactly the same height. This one's just got um, some extra bling going on uh, off of the, the cloak, a bit more of a uh, blinged up cloak with something on the back, as, um, but they've still got the, the cloak on the back. Uh, this one's just got a massive hood type thing and got the blessed blade and the uh, rod of office, I think it is, rather than a null rod. Um, but uh, yeah, got some more ornate uh, Fleur de Lis icons everywhere on, on the back of this um, Canon S but if you wanted to know where this one came from it came from the uh, Sisters of Battle Army set box set it's exclusive to that set um, so they're the two Canon S's I have I almost transitioned into the rest of the size comparisons but fear not I've got the spare parts first of all so we'll move her out of the way and we'll just get these spare parts into shot now here we go so this is the power sword and you can see what I mean about it compared to the Blessed Blade Look at that, it's shorter, it's archaic. We've seen the power sword on multiple models. I, I wanted this um, blessed blade. Sorry about the focus there. So yeah, I, I picked the blessed blade because it's better in, in game as well. It's, it's a bit pricier, uh, but definitely better. Uh, then you've got the null rod. And then you've got the, the brazier, or part of the brazier. You've got the, the other flames here for, for her. I'm not sure if any of these parts are compatible with the Sisters of Battle Battle so Squad. Um, I will try and get that review out to you soon and explain. Uh, this is a Condemner bolt gun. You can't use it as a normal bolt gun, which kind of sucks. Um, maybe you could have it just like that, but it would look odd. So with this uh, crossbow type attachment thing on there, um, yeah, definitely suits it. Oops. Yeah, suits it a bit better with that on there like that. So there you go. And then this this is the Inferno pistol. And yeah, it's the, the position it was in is kind of like there, almost aiming, which totally didn't work with the with the sword pointing that way. Oh well. Uh, number of heads, you get an additional two heads. So you get this one with the hood with the bionic eye, and this one with the bionic eye. And that's it. Oh no, you get another one over here. That's where she is. So yeah, you get three three additional heads. Uh, this is the one. So yeah, this one doesn't have um, any bionics. And then the other weapon is the bolt pistol. You could have a cheap as chips um, cannon S and just have a bolt pistol and the chain sword. Speaking of which, it's here. Fair amount of detail on that one. You've got four uh, Fleur de Lis icons on the spine of the chainsword and a nice uh, grip and a nice handle there. And then here's the chainsword that's uh, in its sheath. Nothing stopping you, I don't think, from putting this on the back of a Sister Superior. That could work. And then this is the other uh, front armor lovely i think if i got another one i'd i'd have her in in this armor with the brazier most probably and with a condemner bolt gun i think i think that's that's the way i'd go but uh yeah the armor and the, the detail is just it's just spot on with this this model i love it okay so that's all the spare parts as you can see you get a lot and no doubt you can mix and match and use them with the the other sisters of battle models Let's do some more size comparisons. So I did show you the, the Canon S in the background there. This is a Sister Superior. Similar height, 
but obviously this one's in a really cool pose, standing on some, some bricks. And then the Dialogus, which on a bigger base, 40 mil base. Yeah, taller than a Canon S, that one. And then the Hospitaler, which is on a massive 50 mil base. Similar height, but she is on that scenic base there. And then uh, just compared to some other models, so I've got the Imagifier, similar height, got uh, Celestine, obviously, you know, a bit, bit shorter. And then Canon compared to a Penitent Engine or Anchor right here. Um, so yeah, she's infantry size. She's not going to stand out that much. So if you do want a, an HQ choice that doesn't stand out too much from your enemy and you can blend in with other squads, uh, then uh, this is the one to go for. And I think she's a stark contrast to all the other um, very, I say, you know what I mean, over the top HQ choices like Celestine and Arusha and the Triumph of St. Catherine, obviously. Uh, she's very, very low key. She's reminds me of like the, the Space Marine captain, really, um, of, of the Sisters of Battle army. Let's just do a couple of size comparisons with Space Marines. So I've got a normal Space Marine there and then a Primaris on the right. Uh, she is, yeah, same height, if not a bit taller than a Space Marine. And then, uh, yeah, smaller than a Primaris, of course. So. so there you go. That's where she weighs up in the, the height size uh, compared to uh, Space Marines. And now you've entered my part of the review where I will go through all of her rules. And she does have a fair amount of rules uh, for a standard HQ choice for Sisters of Battle. She's a power points cost of a three and a points cost of 45. Now you may think, oh, 45 points super for a, an HQ choice sounds pretty good. So a plasma pistol will set you back another five points, so that's 50. And then a blessed blade will set you back another nine points, so that's 59 points already. Uh, you could go for the null rod, which is 12 points. You could go for the brazier of holy fire which is eight points. You can go for an Inferno pistol, which is seven points. The Condemner bolt gun is only one point though. That's quite nice. So yeah, you can rack up the points with this, with this HQ uh, unit. So her stat line reads, movement of six inches, weapon skill and ballistic skill, both two plus, strength three, toughness three, five wounds, four attacks, leadership nine, and a save of three plus. Now, she, although she has Shield of Faith, which is an invulnerable 6 plus save, she, do, she is equipped with a Rosarius, which gives her a 4 plus invulnerable save. So that's nice. Save of 3 plus, invulnerable 4 plus. She's a bit squidgy at toughness 3, and she, she's not that strong at strength 3. But in all intents and purposes, that's a very strong stat line. She only has one wound less than Celestine, and two attacks less than Celestine. She doesn't quite have that two plus save, um, but her weapon skill, ballistic skill, strength and toughness are all the same as Celestine, and Celestine is um, almost triple the power points cost. She's a single model equipped with a bolt pistol, chainsaw, frag grenades, and crack grenades. So bolt pistols, bolt guns, they all do the usual stuff. Condemner bolt guns. Now, this is a weapon you might not be familiar with, so I'll just explain it. It's a, it's a bolt gun, so it's a range 24 inch, Rapid fire one, strength four, AP zero, and damage one, so same as a normal bolt gun, but it does have an extra ability, whereby when resolving an attack made with this weapon against the Psyker unit, this weapon has a damage characteristic of D3 for that attack. So that's nice, statistically you're gonna get two on the damage, uh, but, it, you know, but you can get three. Blessed Blade, this is what I've equipped mine with. Uh, it bumps the strength up um, by plus two, so that's strength five, AP minus three, and a damage of D3. That's way better than a power sword, which is just the strength of the user, which is only three. It's the same AP, but you're getting a possible of damage D3 instead of only a damage one. Don't leave home without your blessed blade. It's way better than the power sword. Chain swords and frag and crack grenades all work as usual. War gear options. This is where it gets a little bit confusing. This model can be equipped with one bolt gun and one power sword instead of one bolt pistol and one chain sword. Although typically this model Although this model here doesn't come with a bolt gun, just comes with that Condemner bolt gun. So that's a little bit odd. If this model is equipped with one bolt gun and one power sword, it additionally has a rod of office. So again, it's ob she's obviously got the rod of office somewhere, or you could technically say that that sheath chain sword or whatever it is, is the power sword and she's holding the rod of office. But again, 
where's the bolt gun? <laughs> so it raises a few questions in terms of WYSIWYG. Uh, this model can be equipped with one of the following instead of one bolt pistol. One condemner bolt gun, one weapon from the pistols list. So what she's doing there is that means that she has to have a bolt pistol and a chain sword because that's the only way you get the bolt pistol. So she'll have the chain sword and then she can um, swap the bolt pistol with the condemner bolt gun or weapon from the pistol list. So she's still got the chain sword at the moment. This model can be equipped with one of the following instead of one chain sword, a power sword, blessed blade. So there you go. So you can swap that chain sword finally for a power sword or blessed blade. And then it says if this model is equipped with a chain sword, it can have a brazier of ho it can have a brazier of holy fire or a null rod. So finally, if she's still got that chain sword from the top, she can ha she can also have the brazier of holy fire or a null rod. So she'd have the um, chain sword on the back and then have the brazier of holy fire or null rod uh, in the right hand because that's what the models equipped her with. So it can get a bit confusing. It can take a while to it to um, understand all of the, the restrictions there. But typically what we're saying is if she's got the bolt piston and chain sword, she can swap it for a power sword, blessed blade, and swap the pistol for a uh, condemner bolt gun or you know plasma pistol or inferno pistol. That's what we're saying. And it also means that she can't have a power sword or blessed blade along with a brazier of holy fire or null rod. She has to have the chain sword um, to get those two things. Hope that makes sense. If there's any questions after that, put it in the comments below as always. So abilities then. Uh, Acts of Faith, Sacred Rites and Shield of Faith. Rosarius, which I've explained, gives her a 4 plus and vulnerable save. And then you've got uh, a few abilities that are applicable to the weapons that you've chosen. So the first one is Brazier of Holy Fire. Whilst any models from your army that have Braziers of Holy Fire are within 6 inches of any demon units, Subtract one from the leadership characteristic of each of those enemy units. I guess they're just frightened of flames or something. <laughs> in, in addition, if this model has a brazier of holy fire, then once per battle, when this model fires overwatch or is chosen to shoot with, it, with, it can unleash the brazier's holy flames. When it does, select one enemy unit within 12 inches of this model. If firing at overwatch, you must select the unit that has declared a charge against this model and roll 1d6. On a 2+, plus, that enemy unit suffers d3 mortal wounds. If that enemy unit is a demon, it suffers d6 mortal wounds instead. That is horrific. Yes, you can only use it once per battle, but the ability to spew out 12 inches worth of uh, d3 mortal wounds or against demons, d6 mortal wounds, is, is amazing. But you've got to have that um, Brazier of Holy Fire for that. The other abilities, Lead the Righteous. You can re-roll hit rolls for one for attacks made by models and friendly order units whilst their unit is within six inches of this model. That's brilliant, similar to what like captains do and things, and uh, lieutenants. Rod of Office. If this model has a Rod of Office, add three inch to the range of its Lead the Righteous ability. That's pretty good. So you've got the Rod of Office, then you've got nine inch bubble for that reroll hit rolls of one. And then finally, Null Rod. If this model has a Null Rod, then it cannot be targeted or affected by psychic powers. In addition, whilst any models from your army that have Null Rods are within 18 inches of any enemy psychic model, subtract one from the psychic tests and deny which tests taken for those enemy models. If you want to go demon hunting, then yeah, carry your brazier of holy fire, really. I'm a bit baffled why she can't take a hand flamer. That would have been cool, you know, having a hand flamer and a brazier of holy fire. Never mind. Keywords, Imperium, Adeptus Ministorum, Adeptus Sororitas, Character, Infantry, Canon S. So there you go, quite an exhaustive look at this model, but I think she deserved it. She is a lovely model in all of the options that you can pick for her. Um, she's decently priced uh, with all of the, the options that you get, and I'm pretty sure you can use those um, weapons and things and spread them out in your Sisters of Battle army. She is the main go-to HQ choice for your Sisters of Battle, unless you want to start paying mega bucks and mega points costs for the others. The missionary just doesn't cut it for me. Junith Aruta is for the Order of Varmartered Lady and is still a bit pricey. Triumph of St. Catherine is, is a diorama piece, which although is great, is a bit difficult to navigate around the board. And Celestine is a great big golden colored target um, to be taken down as quick as possible. Um, and she's quite costly as well, especially with the Gemini. So in conclusion, this is your go-to 
HQ choice for your brand new Sisters of Battle army. If you're starting afresh, I'd recommend picking up a Battle Sisters squad, maybe making two units of five out of them and getting this cannon S. And then you've got a little small army and can, you can add from that. You can add some penitent engines, you can add a Hospitala, maybe get a Rhino and then keep fleshing out the army. What do you guys think of the model and the rules? I know there's not anything amazing or stand out about her rules uh, that put her out compared to Celestine and things, but she's a very dependable, useful HQ choice that will still get things done. What do you guys think? Put it in the comments below. It'd be great to hear from you. Thank you ever so much for joining me today. Thank you for watching. The Emperor Protects.